It is a pleasure to have uh, with us today Enrique uh, Santos Lima from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Uh, you see already the title of his uh, talk on the screen. Uh, Enrique uh, is about to finish his PhD thesis uh, in a couple of months. And uh, okay, uh, I think we can start, but uh, maybe Thanasis would like to, to say a few words. Is it uh, something that happened now? Uh, can, can, can you ask, please, uh, Thanasis, if you will come to say a few words, or then if not, we can start immediately. Yeah. Thank you very much. I, I, I would like to thank you, Professor Athanasius Jemus, and all organizers of this seminar. So, okay, we can start. And, Athanasius, something happened now, he has an obligation, an urgent thing. So, Enrique, uh, please start your talk and we will follow. And then, after the end of the talk, we'll have, we will have some discussion. And some if someone wants to clarify something, then it may he may or she may interrupt you during the talk, but just for clarifications. The discussion will be at the end. So please start. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, in this seminar, I will discuss about transport phenomena, more precisely about transport phenomena in n vector models, which will be defined in the next in the next slides. Uh, in these three works, which is in the are in this seminar, we studied three any vector models, and we verify that the Fourier law is validated. Bring this from the micro to the macro physics. So the Fourier law. And other transport droplets naturally merge in macroscopic system, which are not in thermal equilibrium. For instance, in as an example of a one-dimensional system, if a system is in uh, in two reservoirs with different temperatures, this system clearly is not in thermal equilibrium because the temperatures are different. So. If the system is put in contact with uh, two reservoirs with equal temperatures, so the system possibly achieves the thermal equilibrium in a certain time. The Fourier's law is a linear relation between the gradient of temperature and the heat flux. So the gradient of temperature is the cause of the heat flux. So the, the heat flux is the effect of this uh, uh, phenomenon. And it, it means that uh, a gradient of temperature generates a heat flux in the opposite direction. And the constant of proportionality, proportionality of this law is called often thermoconductivity. Uh, here we start only one dimension, uh, one dimensional, uh, one dimensional heat flux. We are not interested in, in uh, three dimensional ones because it's very difficult to simulate. But it's, it doesn't mean that we uh, do not start three dimensional system, for instance because it does not do, uh, it does not have to do uh, this. But in principle, uh, this constant of proportionality called thermoconductivity uh, may depend on temperature and pressure or pressure and etc. But the requirements of the validation of the Fourier's law, summarizing that, uh, have to be that the, the, the kappa cannot uh, be dependent of the temp temperature gradient because it breaks your linearity and cannot be dependent on the lattice size because or it's diverse or it is zero at the thermodynamic limit. And it's a problem 
for a well-defined law. So the heat flux is linearly proportional to the gradient of temperature. If the, 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 the kappa depends on the temperature gradient, it is not more linear and it, it breaks your linearity. And it's a problem in this law because it's a linear relation. And kappa uh, often is dependent on temperature. Uh, almost in all cases, it's dependent only on temperature, not in pressure. But in experimental results, we see that this law is dependent on pressure too. But uh, kappa can be or must be uh, dependent on temperature and pressure, as I, I talked about uh, before. And kappa is a well-behaved function of its argument. Uh, it means that it, it, cannot, it cannot diverge and it cannot be a, a, a zero value because it's, it's a, heat, a zero heat flux in all uh, time. It's, a, it's a, a trouble here. So after that, uh, the main goals of this presentation is to investigate the thermoconductivity of any vector models, which uh, I will be defined in the next uh, slides. And uh, we simulate uh, any for one, two, and three uh, vector models using molecular dynamic simulation. Uh, for curiosity, N equal one is the so-called Ising model. N equal two is the XY model. And N equal three is the well-known Heisenberg model. Uh, N equal one can be any model in the same universality class of the Ising model. N equal two can be any model in the same universality class of the XY model, and N equal three can be any model in the same universality class of the Heisenberg, chain, Heisenberg model. Here we focus on N equal one, the easing chain, only in one dimensional lattice or chains. For N equal two, the XY model, we focus on D equal one, two, and three dimensional systems. And for the Heisenberg chain, the, for the Heisenberg model, we focus only in one dimensional system because it, the, this model is very complicated to simulate in other dimensions. Because uh, we will see in this uh, seminar that the, this model cannot be simulated in spherical coordinates because of singularities in these coordinates. But uh, the definition of the n-vector models and iso uh, the isotope ones are in the equation two. We need to preserve the normalization. So the norm of the spins uh, is equal to one. Uh, the norm of spins are equal to one for each side. So uh, it's a condition, it's a constraint. In this model. Uh, here, uh, the definition in equation two is a ferromagnetic model, isotrop one. And uh, if J is, is smaller than zero, this model is an anti ferromagnetic model. But here we focus on classical inertial models. But the definition uh, of the any vector models are here. And for n equal one, in this model, we have only one comp component of spins for each side. So uh, 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 the spins are only in x direction, for, 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 for example, or y direction, or z direction, by, but only in one of these directions. If the system uh, is an n equal to vector model, so uh, we have two components of spin, but this model is the XY. So we have components X and Y of the spins. And uh, interesting property 
of the isotrop model is that the configurational space of the XY model is a circle. While for the easing model, we have only up or down spins, okay? For the Heisenberg model, N equal three, we have a configurational space of a sphere. And uh, we have spin components in X, Y, and Z directions, okay? Rick, there is a clarification question. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so in three dimensions or two dimensions, you don't call them Ising models because you have all the components of the spin. I mean, I would, I would call this system an Ising model even in N equals two or three. But the difference for you is that you have components of the spin in all directions. Is that the difference? Oh, uh, I, any here represents the number of components in a uh, configurational space in the model. Uh, for the, the easy model have only uh, uh, spins in uh, one uh, privileged direction. For example, uh, X, it's, it's only X direction. Yes, the spin in the Ising model is in one direction, but you can have an Ising model in more directions. You can have neighboring spins in two or three uh, coordinates. Is that co correct? But the spin is in one direction in the Ising model. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Differently from the N equal two case, because the N equal two case, we have a, a dot product of the spins, the, the vector the, of, of spins. And we have two components, X and Y. We have in the space uh, spin components in Y and X direction, for example. The Heisenberg is a full uh, component model, uh, as I, uh, I said. Uh, we have components in X, Y, and Z direction. And uh, uh, interesting case is the spherical models. Uh, we commonly call the uh, uh, spherical models, but any e equals to infinity is a hyperspherical model. Uh, n equal four is a hyperspherical model, and that's it because n equal four, the configurational space is not a sphere, it's a hypersphere, but uh, it's commonly called a spherical model because uh, the spherical model, uh, considering the configurational space, is the Heisenberg one. Eh? but uh, it's it's only uh, uh, denominations, but this sum here in the equation two, uh, in brackets, i and j, denotes the first neighbor sum. What is it? Uh, for example, in a one-dimensional system, uh, the first neighbor neighbors are j equal i plus one and j equals to i minus one. The second neighbors are j equal i plus two and i minus two. But if we consider two dimensions, we have four neighbors and it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, this sum is not so simple as in the one-dimensional systems. But for instance, in two-dimensional systems, J here is a vector of the lattice. And uh, we can, can uh, uh, show an example in the next slides to clarify this. But uh, the, the one-dimensional uh, example illustrates this sum. So it's the first neighbor's sum. Uh, the, uh, leave the, the introduction. We have the first recent work which was published by my advisor, Konstantinos Salis, by me, Ugur Tinapi from, from Turkey, and Denise Erogo from Turkey too, uh, published in Physica A in 2023. Uh, 
é, we é, we perform simulations in the classical inertial ferromagnet XY model, which is defined in the equation three. Uh, inertial uh, taking take the taking account the the kinetic energy, which can cannot be be zero in this case. It can 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 be zero in the evolution of time, but the Hamiltonian taking account the kinetic energy. And here we use polar coordinates in the x y model to change the variables and the, it take it's more 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 easy to to simulate and all results here uh, are we 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 make the the re results to approach the classical ones we we have only the high temperature results to conclude our our, our, our provisions in this model to, to uh, make the simulations, we set the, mo the, moment, the moment of inertia as unity and the coping constant, which is the exchange constant, uh, as unit two without loss of generality. In simulations, it's, it's common. Uh, we simulate this model in equal one, two, and three. So we use periodic boundary condition to eliminate some finite size effects. And first, for instance, for d equal one, we have no periodic boundary condition, but three boundary conditions. For d equal two, we have uh, boundary conditions in y direction. So if it's a square lattice, so if we put periodic boundary condition in the system, it's a cylinder now. So the flux uh, goes to the first end of the cylinder, to the last end of the cylinder. It's a, 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 it's a periodic boundary condition for the equal three. We have two periodic boundary conditions in Y and Z direction. So it's a very complicated figure with a, a, a torus in the first uh, periodic boundary condition. But if we take the, the second periodic boundary condition, it's a figure which is, cannot be illustrated in this this seminar. But as I, I mentioned here, uh, one of them has been at low temperature heat bath, uh, and uh, the other part at high temperature reserve. Huh? So the, the first end uh, will be at a high temperature reserve, while the, the, the last particle uh, uh, is is put in, in uh, a cold reserve at temperature tier to generate the heat flux uh, during the simulation. So the for instance the the, the one dimensional uh, equations of motion are here. We have only i the the direction because it's a chain. We have noise. Uh, the noise I I call eta here. And we we see the the temperature uh, multiply the multiplying the the noise here. The, the uh, all noise are Gaussian white noise. Uh, we set also the friction coefficients as unity for numerical convenience. And here is the definition of uh, Gaussian white noise with unity variance because it's, it can be. Uh, 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 of an arbitrary value, but uh, here we set an unity variance, but the 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 the, the zero mean value is a uh, 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 property of the the Gaussian white noise. Here, the example of the two dimensional uh, X Y model. Uh, here, the the noise is a vector. It's not a, a, a uh, as in the, the one-dimensional system. And here, the, the, the coordinates and the momenta depend on the i and j, so x and y direction. And uh, the periodic boundary condition are below uh, from equation seven. And in the equation seven, we see the, the force 
And below of that, we have the periodic boundary condition, which are two uh, conditions. Uh, the, the case D equal three uh, is similar. We have noise as matrices, right? And uh, as an equation eight, and the periodic boundary condition that for as below of the equation eight, and it's the the, the equations of motion. It's uh, uh, only for the x y model. In the the other case, uh, I I will I I will not show the the, the equations of motion, but it, it is a similar. Uh, pro process. Uh, how to obtain the, the the heat flux? We need to 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 bring it from the micro to the macro. So the heat flux is obtained by the continuity equation. The in conservative systems, the Hamiltonian is equal to the energy of the system, the total energy of the system. So uh, it's the same that. Uh, take the time derivative of the energy. The time deri derivative of the energy is equal to this result here in, in, in right. And it's the integral version of the continuity equation. And from here, we obtain the heat flux of the system. So uh, in statistical mechanics, we need to make average. So J here is the average of this JL. So uh, as the, the heat flux is in the x direction, we need to use L, which stands as uh, the lattice size. For example, if it's in three dimension, we have L equals to I, J, and K, as in the equations of motion previously mentioned. And for two dimensional systems, we have L equals I and J and so forth. But, uh, as the flux is in x direction, we have only the, the L, which is in x direction, not the, 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 the results for uh, uh, y and z, for example. It's, it's easy to derivate uh, this flux and obtain it. Uh, the, the, the macroscopic conduct conductivity, kappa, is given by the relation 10 which can be obtained by uh, the heat equation, which is a type of diffusion equation, with uh, the periodic boundary condition as follows. T, the capital T of zero is equals to T8, and capital T of capital L, which is the lattice, the linear lattice size, is equals to TL. So with this periodic boundary condition, we obtain this relation uh, 10. And uh, so uh, J here is the average of the Lagrangian heat flux. Uh, the methods used here are we, we use the asymptotic algorithm, which is called velocity value algorithm, with step size dt equals 0 0.01. We focus on a bigger, on big transient times, large transient times, because we are not focusing in a big number of particles. Uh, we, we need to eliminate the finite size effects and a big, a large transient time is better than a large number of particles in this case. So for, for instance, for d equal one, we use 2.6 times 10 to the power 11, which is a, a big number. And d equal two, we use a times 10 to the power 10. And for three, the d equal three, we use 5.6 times 10 to the power 10. And uh, all averages are taken uh, in four times 10, times 10 to the power eight time steps with eight realizations, which means that we, we take eight times four times 10 to the power eight time steps for the, the average. 
we said T8 for simplicity, we said T8 as T times one plus delta and TL equals to T one minus delta. We said delta equals to 0 0.125 where T is the average temperature. So it's a illustration uh, of the, the lattice for one and two dimensional system. Uh, as mentioned before, uh, the three dimension is uh, unfeasible to illustration. And uh, the reservoir, the hot reservoir is in uh, uh, light red, while the, the, the low temperature reservoir are in uh, light blue. And the, the, the white, the particles in white are the bulk of the particles. And the two dimensional model is a cylinder. And the results are here. After the simulations, we have the thermal conductance, which is defined as uh, kappa over L to the power D in this case. So for the equal one, we have kappa over L only. And uh, the results are in, in figure A, C, and E for the equal one, two, and three, respectively. So uh, all case uh, are uh, smooth curves. So uh, the interesting result results are in B in fig B, D, and F, where uh, uh, as uh, as smooth curves well fitted with the collapsed results. So we collapse the results, all, all points, and we obtain. Uh, a fitting of these these results. Uh, in the next slide, we, we will show the, the 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 function with fitted it, but it's a function which fitted very well the, the results, and it's a common function in non-extensive statistical mechanics. But here uh, this. Uh, is a, 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 a plot of the slope of the thermal conductance for the, the for linear size versus the dimension. If it's equal to the dimension, the, the thermal conductivity is not dependent on the lattice size, which proves that the Fourier's law is obeyed in all dimensions. And in this case, curiously, uh, here is the function uh, uh, which we fit this result in equation 11. This function is often called a q stretched exponential or a shrink uh, exponential. And uh, the Q exponential is defined in, in the first item, which is a positive part of this argument, one plus uh, one minus Q times Z to the power one over one minus Q. And it uh, recovers the, the, the usual exponential when Q is equals to one. So uh, the Fourier's law here corresponds to the thermodynamic limit. So uh, when L approaches to infinity, we recover the the, the the, the macroscopic thermal conductivity or larger values of, 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 of particles. Because we obtain the function, a continuous curve after the, the simulations. And uh, uh, through this function, we can obtain the, the, the asymptotic limit of the, the, the same function. So uh, we obtain this slope of the thermal conductance for the linear size and the slope for the thermal conductivity too, in terms of the linear size. And we uh, prove that rho sigma is equals to D only. So if it is equals to D, so rho kappa, which is the slope of the thermal conductivity, is equals to zero. So it, it is, 
uh, it is the same that be the Fourier's law obeyed. So it, it confirmed confirmed the validation of the Fourier's law. Can you remind us rho rho sigma rho kappa rho sigma uh, is in the four item. Uh, it's uh, obtained by the asymptotic limit of the equation 11. Now there, and, sorry, excuse me. Can you talk a bit louder? Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. Rho sigma is, uh, rho sigma is, the, uh, is the, the slope of the... Okay, I see. I see. You have the expressions there for sigma and kappa. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. It is obtained asymptotically by the expression 11, in equation 11. We obtain the, this limit. And for, for kappa, we obtain the, the limit 2 and there are different slopes. But it's, uh, it's only uh, the slope of the, the, the thermal conductivity in terms of 1 over L, for instance. But uh, it confirms the, the validation of the Fourier's law in all dimensions, all feasible dimensions, because D equal four, five, six are uh, too much complicated to simulate because uh, we use D minus one uh, periodic boundary condition. So for this case, it's unfeasible. But the question is, does it hold true for both N equal one, isn't and n equal three Heisenberg. So the, in the in this recent article pub published by me and my advisor Constantin Sars in Fisca in 2023, we assume two anisotropic XY models, which have the same equilibrium properties of the easy model in some circumstances. So in, in some limits, it uh, they, they behave as the eyes, the, the easy model. The first model is uh, a model with a self interaction between spins in that in the x direction, and it's a, a, a local anisotropy an, an where this epsilon L is the, the anisotropy, an, uh, the parameter, pa, parameter of the anisotropy. It takes from zero to infinity. And uh, from the continuity equation, we obtain the Lagrangian heat flux, and it is in the equation 13. And it preserves the structure of the heat flux of the XY model, as previously mentioned. And the second model is a, is a anisotropic coping. Uh, in other words, it is a, a, a anisotropy in the exchange coping. And this model corresponds to the easing in. Uh, plus or minus one value of this this anisotropy parameter parameter epsilon a. So epsilon a equals plus or minus one correspond to the Eisen into the Eisen model along the y and x direction respectively. And epsilon a is the the usual x y model. Uh, the heat flux is not trivial. It's not the the the, the same of the x y and this in the equation 15. So let's go to the results. Uh, sorry, here is the schematic representation of the anisotropic XY coping model. Here, epsilon A equals to zero represents a spin in a configuration a space of a circle. And it preserves the unitary norm. So to preserve this norm, we need to maintain the, the size. So it's uh, as the, the epsilon A uh, increase, the circle is compressed, preserving the norm. And for epsilon A equals to one, we have a high compressed in here in such a way that the spins only move to up or down. So the model, which is uh, 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 with the spins are up 
or down uh, in the structure of the invector models, clearly, is the is in model or, or any model in the same university class. So the results for the thermal conductance are here. For the first model, which is the, the, the local uh, anisotropy, uh, we illustrate the case L equal 50. And a curious fact is that the, the slope saturates in some moment. So the slope saturates in minus 3. So we uh, have plot the uh, minus slope versus epsilon f. So uh, the slope uh, saturates in minus 3 in this case. So uh, we, te we have tested two models which have the same properties of the, the Eisen model in equilibrium to verify that if both models share the same non-equilibrium properties, in this case, and they behave as Eisen in certain limits. So the 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 the, the, the non-equilibrium properties are the same of the Eisen model in this case. Uh, in other words, if the slope of the thermal conductance or thermal conductivity are the same for both models. So it's the thermal con it's, it's the, the slope of the Eisen model because the, the it's a, it's only a it's not a coincidence that the uh, two models that share the same properties of the Eisen model have also the same slopes of some non-equilibrium properties of the system. Uh, so these are the results, uh, thermal conductance versus T and the slope, saturate, saturating. And uh, the, the, the fig tree uh, in button uh, is fitted uh, by a key. Enrique, can I ask what? you something? You say the slope is minus three, Yes, yeah. three, not minus three. No, no, because uh, we ha have plot uh, minus the slope. Okay. Epsilon L. Okay. Uh, it, uh, so the 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 y axis minus is minus, minus slope. slope. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, uh, so the the. The risk out uh, thermal conductance versus uh, L to the power gamma times T, where gamma is equal to 0 0.3 G6, is uh, almost uh, fitted by a Q stretched exponential 2. Uh, despite of the crossover, it's well fitted in a Q stretched exponential 4. Uh, the crossover is in the middle of this curve which is a change of universality class because at low temperature regime, it's in, in that uh, at, uh, small parameters, uh, we have the XY model, which is, we have a different universality class of the, the easing, okay? Uh, so the slopes uh, at low temperature here uh, is, the same of the slope of the xy, but as the, the, the temperature increase and the lattice size two, uh, we, we see a repentant uh, chain of the curve and it reads the Eisen model. But we have taken in mind that uh, q here in the q stretched exponential function is 1.65, while the eta value is 1.94. Let's see the, the result for the second model. The thermal conductance is uh, here for various values of the, the parameter. And curiously, the slope saturates also 
in minus three. And it's a curious fact that the thermal conductivity have the same exponent for the, the temperature in both models. And uh, the Riscard thermal conduct conductance is fitted by a Q stretch exponential, as in the first model, and Q and eta are the same. So Q here is also 1.65, and eta is also 1.94. And the both models share the same slope of the thermal conductivity. Indeed, uh, in this approach, uh, the relation uh, gamma times eta over Q minus one is approximately 1.003. To validate the Fourier's law, it can be, it, 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 it is, uh, it, it uh, must be approximately one. So uh, the Fourier's law is validated in this case, as in the XY model, and the uh, thermal conductance of the Eisen model is a, a power law of the temperature with exponent minus three. <clears throat> it's an interesting uh, result for the, the Eisen. Since the, the Eisen model had no uh, molecular dynamic simulation, uh, we cannot access directly the Eisen model by molecular dynamic simulation. So uh, our idea uh, with Professor uh, Cisales was uh, to uh, use the, um, the uh, anisotropic versions uh, of the XY model, which shares the same equilibrium properties of the Eisen model in some circumstances, in some values of the parameters, uh, anisotropic parameters. And N equal one is validated and the Fourier's law is obeyed for N equal one for a one dimensional uh, system, clearly and n equal true for uh, all dimensions. So, and what about the Heisenberg chain? Uh, in a recent work with uh, Professor Salis and Professor Fernando Dantas Nobel, which is a collaborator in this work, and is a professor at BPF, and this work was published in the, the last uh, day of the year <laughs> uh, in entropy in 2023. Uh, in this, uh, the definition of the model is here, where the first uh, part of the Hamiltonian denotes the uh, angular momentum for its size, the sum of the angular momentum, while the second part is related with the spin coordinates. Uh, 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 a problem with this model is that uh, it needs to be converted in the spherical coordinates, but the spherical coordinates uh, deriving the equations of motion, we have singularities in our expression with one over uh, sine square of uh, theta, for example. So in uh, theta equal pi or any multiple of pi, we have a singularity here and it explodes and it's a problem, it's a total problem in the simulation. So uh, unfortunately, we need to simulate the, this model in uh, spin coordinates and uh, angular momentum. <clears throat> uh, we need to preserve the, the, the unit norm in all uh, steps of time. We uh, assume a constraint with the, uh, angular momentum is perpendicular to the spin coordinates. So the dot product of the angular momentum, the spin coordinates is equal to zero. Okay. All of this one dimension, clarify. And the equations of motion are here. Uh, these equations are not trivial. It's, it's not uh, only a derivative as in uh, Hamilton, Hamilton equation. It's, it, it needs to be 
derived by computation relations. And uh, the, the equations for the bulk of particles are in 17. And the equations for the, the ends, for the extremities, uh, with uh, Langevin heat beds, within one dimensions are vectors, the noise are vectors. We have uh, Langevin equations in one and the last particle in, as in equation 18. But- Karim, can I ask you something? Yeah. Uh, the L1, L1 dot and the L, L dot, uh, you say that they follow standard Langevin dynamics. Is, uh, do you mean uh, usual stochastic Langevin dynamics? What do you mean? No. Uh, in equation 18? The, yes, the equation uh, equations uh, eight. eighteen. What when you say follow standard Langevin dynamics? Uh, I'm not an expert. I'm just asking. Okay, uh, Langevin okay. dynamics. Okay. Do it's not a standard equation. Okay, because uh, the standard equations uh, often are using uh, uh, simple coordinates Q and PQ, for example. Here. <laughs> Uh, the coordinates are not canonical. S is the spin coordinates, and L is the angular momentum. In the, it's not canonical. It's not canonical. No. It's not, no. not conjugate. Okay. So okay. The, the, these these Langevin equations are not uh, standard. So it, it, it certainly is uh, a Langevin equation. Uh, the L L one, for example. Because it is yeah, the eta, eta H and eta L are, are uh, random variables, aren't they? Yeah. No, it's, it's Gaussian uh, white noise vectors. Okay. Yeah, so the, the, they have a stochastic part. So the, yeah. the, yes, yes. That's, that's the eta uh, terms. Okay. But uh, in in this case, we have a problem to, to uh, simulate because S and L uh depend on each other and it's not canonical and we uh, have we had some ideas to 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 manipulate these equations and we use the constraint mentioned before which l dot s equals to zero to obtain a second order difference equation which is uh, quite complicated but it can be simulated by velocity valley algorithm, <laughs> curiously, but uh, the, the equation 17 and 18 uh, may not be, be simulated by velocity valley with a simple algorithm, but uh, we can use a range cutter algorithm, for example, but it's dangerous for stochastic equations. Uh, we, we need to be careful in this case, but, here, uh, we use the constraint and we obtain uh, substitution using some manipulations. We obtain the equation 20 and 21. Uh, look at the equation 21. Uh, in these two equations, which are some type of stochastic equations, we have multiplicative noise, but it's not trivial multiplicative noise. In most of the case, we have a function multiplicated by a noise, correct? In this case, we have a vector with uh, an essential vector in the evolution of the system in a cross product with the vector noise. Uh, as mentioned uh, before, this noise has a relation with the temperature. So as the, the, the temperature increase, these noise effects increase too. And they spins at high temperature frequently are more oscillative. <laughs> uh, we, we call it this oscillative when the temperature is high. So it uh, vibrate more. And uh, 
we uh, uh, it's a, a problem to to deal with and uh, we 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 lost we 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 win in some case and lost in some case and in this case we win uh, uh, in the case of uh, obtain a second or different equation to use a simplet algorithm and we lost in the multiplicative noise with a cross product. So, and we obtain in the same form of the, in the same way of the, the others in vector models, we obtain the heat flux and the heat flux uh, depend on the spin coordinates because uh, uh, the evolution is taken using a spin coordinate and the time derivative of the spin coordinates too. Uh, and we obtain these results. We have an, uh, a curve for, for the thermal conductivity and uh, in the thermal conductivity for high temperatures, it almost collapses in all results here as the, the temperature increase, but uh, by inducing some errors by the multiplicative noise, we have some uh, problems here, but it's an a, a, a interesting result in this case. And uh, in figure B, we have the thermal conduct conductance. We simulate for L equal 50, 70, uh, 100, and 140. And uh, the, the results are yeah. taken after the transient time, yes. and yeah. we use. Oh, Eric, yeah. Uh, does does this mean in your picture on the right that the conductivity constant is not a constant but depends on noise? That doesn't seem so unreasonable to me. No, uh, depends on noise. Yes, on, on the right uh, picture you have. Uh, where the noise is involved, isn't it on the right in the right picture? No, 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 no. Uh, this result is taken after a, a long transient time, and okay. uh, it achieves it in some some moment achieves the stationary state, and it's not dependent on noise. But uh, as the temperature increase, the term in, with noise is dependent on the square root of the temperature. So uh, it affects in some circumstances the results okay, because it's a numerical simulation. So oh, oh. Uh, unfortunately, we need to, to deal with. To understand this better, yeah. But these are the results, but despite of the, the this problems with errors, we have uh, interesting result for the collapsed curve. This, the thermal conductance is well fitted by a Q-stretched exponential as the n equal one and n equal two vector models. And for four case of lattice size. So uh, after it, we need to verify that the Fourier's law is obeyed. It's not only fit the function. It's not interesting. Uh, 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 we need to verify some law. It's the uh, uh, it's the the, the go of the this this work. So uh, using this function, uh, the Fourier's law is is verified by the relation gamma, which here is zero point four seven five times eta, which is 2.88 over Q minus one. Q is equals to 2.28. So this relation is approximately equals to 1.07. So the Fourier's law uh, is validated in the Heisenberg chain too. So uh, we believe that all N vector models obey the Fourier's law. Uh, and uh, the thermal conductivity of the Heisenberg chain uh, clearly in, uh, not dependent on the, the lattice size 
is equals to is asymptotically uh, behaving as t to the power minus 2.25. And in the next slide, we have a, a table with the results. So uh, n uh, uh, eta times gamma to uh, over q minus one for d equal one, d equal two, d equal three. And for the Isen ferromagnet, we have 1.0063, it's a, 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 a good result. So for n equal two xy ferromagnet, we have 1.0007. For d equal two, which is the, the, the only the, the it's the, the only model which we've uh, making simulations in d equal uh, two and three. Né? So uh, uh, d equal two is 0 0.95 and d equal three is equal to 0 0.93. And uh, the Heisenberg ferromagnet is, uh, have a, 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 has a result 1.069, which is 1.07. And all models studied here validate the Fourier law. Uh, in a final remark, so uh, uh, the Fourier law is obeyed for n equal one, two, and three vector models. Uh, the Q stretch exponential provides a good explanation of low temperature regime, despite of the uh, the low temperature regime uh, is better described by quantum mechanics, but if the 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 they spin the the the, the number of spins are uh, uh, big, we have a continuum here, and the commutation relations for the spins for all spins are zero. So uh, it can be modeled by by classical simulations. But uh, the quantum just uh, uh, ha has more has better results than classical for low temperatures. And the relation gamma times eta over q minus one equals to one is a necessary condition to this law holds. If it's not true in this model, if it uh, was not true, so the, the Fourier law is not, was not validated and the, the, this works simply. Uh, it opens a question about some models with generic range interaction does alpha xy model, which is a model with the case with one over r to the power alpha. And uh, which, uh, in, uh, in certain limits, it's, uh, it's have, it has short range interactions and in certain limits, it has long range interactions. And this limit is about, we, we, we talk about the alpha. From zero to one, but for, for instance, in the one dimensional case, uh, this model is long range and uh, graded in, then it, it's, it's a, a short range, but not simple as I, I said. Uh, since no extensive statistical mechanic has been used in the description of a wide variety of complex system, uh, we expect that this uh, results uh, should be appli uh, applicable uh, in a diverse uh, non-equilibrium regimes. We, we can study uh, other models to, to verify some properties and we can study, uh, we, we, we can study uh, other transport properties as uh, viscosity, as transport of mass and et cetera. And we finished the, 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 the seminar and uh, we acknowledge uh, Ugur Tirnak, uh, Denise Eroglu, Fernando Dantas, Ulisses Barra de Almeida, uh, Mendes, uh, our uh, uh, partial financial support by CNPQ and Vapesh, and the LNTC, which is a national laboratory of comp uh, scientific computing in Brazil, for allowing us to use the Santos Dumont supercomputer. Thank you very much. And uh, here uh, we have some reference uh, of the first uh, work, second, and three work. Thank you. Thank we you, Henrik, for the talk. Uh,
it's time for questions. So we're from the audience here. Is someone who wants to ask something? Please uh, let's go ahead. Two, two, two simple and naive questions. Uh, one, do you expect or have you seen any like phase transition effects? Like, uh, for example, the Ising model, if you put it inside the a magnet, you have a phase transition in, uh, and you have the temperature, the Curie temperature. Uh, I don't know if you see such effects in conductivity. And the other question is, what you have studied is like a steady state and you discussed uh, non-equilibrium models. So you're hopeful that your model will tell you something about non-equilibrium uh, effects also? Yeah. So uh, uh, we are not interested in uh, phase transitions here because we are studying short, uh, systems with short range interactions and in one dimension uh, lattice, for example. But uh, uh, the ISIN is a model well known by the, the by phase transitions, uh, two dimension and three dimensional systems. But in this case, uh, we didn't simulate the case uh, 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 two-dimensional in the three-dimensional case to verify it. But uh, if the, the democonductivity uh, has a singularity uh, and some critical temperature for uh, 2 and uh, 3D, we have a problem in the definition of the Fourier's law. But it, is, it, can, it can be studied in the future. We need to study more the, the, the results. And about the <clears throat> non-equilibrium, uh, we, uh, we are talking about a stationary state. And uh, uh, equilibrium state is not always the stationary state. In some systems, the stationary state is the same as the equilibrium state. But uh, in this case, we are in non-equilibrium, but in a stationary state, where uh, the definition of stationary state here is that the, the, the properties, the, param the parameters of the system or the density of probability are not dependent on time. And here, uh, our system is put in contact with different temperatures and the system is always in non-equilibrium but in a stationary state it's a uh, we respond to your question uh, yes I, I then maybe i meant transient effects like but equilibrium doesn't mean static it means a steady state as you have here yeah no. That's what you meant that you're going to study. Okay, thank you. Okay, another question. That's well. Yes, I would like to ask. <clears throat> uh, there have been several studies of uh, uh, ordinary nonlinear lattices in one dimension and more than one dimension, for say of the firm Pastaulam type. And okay. people have studied that in several decades, a long time ago, and found some estimates of the uh, uh, conductivity, thermal conductivity, uh, as uh, and the dependent, depending on, the, on dimensions. Uh, do you have any comparison with, with that? Oh, it's true. Uh, we discussed about it with some uh, referees. <laughs> but uh, I was not a referee. <laughs> 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 but uh, but uh, uh, it's a joke. But uh, the yeah. the Femme Pasta Ulan is a, a, a model which is some nonlinearity, which is uh, x to the power four, for example, which presents some abnormality. Uh, the 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 thermal conductivity is anomalous. In the 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 Fem Pasta Ulan, but true. the Fem Pasta Ulan uh, 
is a model with x coordinates, special coordinates. Uh, it's uh, it have ha, has a difference uh, between the x y and uh, the fem pastaudum because in our case we have uh, an harmonical uh, oscillator at low temperatures, but for high temperatures we cannot. Uh, uh, use this harmonic approximation. Indeed, uh, taking takes account uh, all nonlinearities in the system. But uh, the the fem pastaudum is a model with anomalous thermal conductivity. But uh, uh, the X Y model uh, in all dimensions present here have a curious fact that the, the thermal conductivity is normal in all values of T. And some people in uh, 2000, but for, for instance, uh, uh, presented some results that the, the XY model behaves only in some uh, values of temperature as a normal uh, conductor. Oh. And uh, but uh, in the the this work with Wu and uh, Salz and Irogu, we uh, verify that it is not true and because uh, we use big transient uh, times and big uh, values of uh, uh, time step to take the average, and uh, all steps we are used. Uh, we uh, just verified uh, the Fourier's law. <clears throat> Do you understand? For your models, yes. And it, so it depends on the linearity, as you say. Yeah. Uh, it's a different story. That's correct. And somewhere in the end, I saw that your kappa uh, conductivity constant was depending on the temperature to the minus three, some model. I didn't understand. In three, three slides back, uh, few, uh, well, yeah. I saw the cap, cap, the cap, no, yes, yes, yes. So, kappa is depending on inverse temperature, yeah. So, it, it's not a constant, then. No, no, in this case, no, for high temperature limit, it uh, does, does not behave as a constant. But uh -huh. if at low temperature, it behaves as a constant. Ah, low temperature. At low temperatures. Uh, at constant, no. Uh, uh, this thermal conductance behaves as a constant, but the thermal conductivity uh, diverse oh, yeah. with, uh, is ballistic in this yeah. case. Uh, is that the only place where it happens? The other? Yeah. yeah. In the other models, your K was a constant. Kappa. No, no. Uh, our kappa uh, is uh, depend on temperature in all models for high temperature limit. Uh huh. Uh, for example, in the 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 easing. Right. In a similar way, maybe. Yeah. We have uh, t to the power minus oh. three. Yes. Uh, yes. Easing. Okay. So okay. So I don't know how you can say that uh, Fourier's law is obeyed. Yes, in a way, but with a kappa, with a kappa that is temperature dependent. It's because the the kappa is not dependent on the lattice size in this case. Uh, uh, using yeah. a few stretched exponential, uh, the asymptotic approximation of this expression, the thermodynamic limit, uh, gives to me a, a, a power law, and this power law. Uh, Using the thermal conductance, perfect. Uh, uh, the thermal conductance is equals to a uh, uh, function uh, linear in in the lattice size. So, uh, as the definition of the kappa, we uh, as uh, uh, sigma is equal to kappa over L, we obtain the the the, the these results. We have uh, uh, sigma equals to L to the power minus one times t to the power of some exponent, for yes, example. Yes, yes, So the, the, the kappa 
is independent of the lattice size because uh, sigma is equals to kappa over L. And uh, curiously, in this this yeah. three models, we have the these conditions. Very good. Thank you very much. Very Thank interesting. Okay. So very interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Enrique, for the talk. Okay. Enrique, Enrique, or here, Enrique. I think it is Enrique for Enrique. Uh, in <laughs> right. it's Enrique. Okay. 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 So. Okay. Obrigado. Obrigado, Enrique. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Nada. Nice. Yeah. nice to meet you. Yeah. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. The talk is going to be uploaded in about one, two hours in the YouTube channel of the Academy, and I will send you the link. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Uh, next week we have a. Okay. So, bye from bye from us. Have a good morning. Good morning. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.